Amen. And I'm not talking about the heat. Man, I'm, I'm glad that we serve a God that we can feel. And we can testify along with that song that threw it all. And I don't know what you've been through. But if you like me, you've been through something. And through it all, I'm still here. You ought to put your hands together for that. That through your sickness, through your being broke, through your lack of resources, that time you lost your hope, that time you want to give up, Should have been dead a long time ago. God saw fit. Let my days roll on. Just a little while longer. Let me tell you this. It ain't because I've been so good. Come on. <laughs> it ain't because I decided right. No, it's because of his grace. <laughs> and whatever his grace didn't get. Mercy called the rich. Thank God. Man, I'm not going to be long today. Today we're going to spend a little time encouraging our ministers. We want to really thank them, appreciate them for the service to the church and uh, the service to the Lord. And their decision. It's, it's a decision to be faithful. Mm -hmm. And so I thank them for deciding Amen. To serve God in the capacities that they do. Uh, do want to encourage you to be prayerful for our next series of preaching. You know, we just finished up Let Jesus Lead You. Uh, we're going to begin a new series on next Sunday entitled Let the Spirit Lead You. We spent time talking about the role of Christ and is leading our way. We want to next spend a little time talking about the Holy Spirit, yeah. particularly its role around uh, the crucifixion and the resurrection of Christ. So we'll be talking about that as we move closer to Resurrection Sunday. So be prayerful for that. We're going to encourage these men uh, today, our ministers, and all of us who carry God's word, because you don't have to stand up here right. to carry his word. That's the problem. The only time we want to say it is when we're up here. All right. But I would argue that it needs to be said more Come on. when you leave him. Right. Go with me to John. We ain't gonna be long. Go to go to John, St. John, chapter one. I want to look at verses six. Verses six through eight. When you find it, let us stand to our feet for the reading and reverencing of his word. John chapter 1, verse 6. Hear God's word. There was a man <clears throat> sent from God whose name was John. The same came for a witness, to bear witness of the light that all men through him might believe. He was not that light, but was sent to bear witness of that light. All right. You may be seated in the presence of God. Verse 6 says, there was a man sent from God. Today I'm going to tag this text from which to preach. I want to talk from this subject, a man sent from God. Come on. A, a man sent uh, from God. We, we live in a time where there are things that are vying for our attention. Uh, we, 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 have you noticed that, that, that while we're watching TV, 
There are ads scrolling on the screen while we're watching TV. We're watching TV, and, and there are things that while we're watching TV that are vying for our attention. Right. Mm -hmm. you, you can be watching TV, and, and they'll take what you're watching, put it in a little box, yeah. and make you watch an advertisement. Yeah. Yeah. All day long, we have people uh, and things and, and, and forces that are pulling for our attention, all with the intent of trying to compel us to do something. Amen. Yeah, that's the, that's the purpose of, of gaining our attention, that, that, that it would move us to, to, to do something, whether it be uh, uh, move towards a, a purchase or uh, move towards performing a, a, a service. But uh, our attention is, is being moved upon or it's trying to be gained in order that we may do something. Mm -hmm. And if you if you like me, you as you get older, you are careful mm -hmm. of what you allow yeah. to get your attention. Yeah. I wish I had some church folk, the folk who have grown to the extent that you are careful what you allow yeah. to gain access to you. All right. All right. Yeah, I mean, I mean, listen, listen. When I was younger, I, I acted as a child. I thought as a child, but but as I gotten older, I put away childish things. And one of the things that I, I put away is allowing any and everything into my circle. It's not that I'm better. It's not that I think I'm exalting myself over anything or anybody else. It's that I just discovered some things are not worth. My time. <laughs> have anybody discovered that that the most valuable thing that you have is not your money? No. It's not your career. No. It's the few moments that God is giving you right now. No. Uh, and so, listen, listen. Your, your time becomes uh, valuable, and you're careful of who you allow to gain your attention, particularly. When it comes to your spirituality, yes. mm -hmm. I, I don't know about you, but uh, 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 I, it's been years, many years that God has worked on this foundation. Yeah. It, it didn't happen overnight. God has built up my faith. And guess what? It's been tried and it's been tested. Yeah. I, I might not have been able to count on many things in life, but I've been able to count on God in life. And, and he's built up my foundation. And I am very careful who I allow to add to the foundation. Just tell me anything about God. And everybody, listen, listen, listen. Everybody that says they're coming in his name are not necessarily fit to speak for him. I don't know about you that if one's gonna come talk to me about God, huh? He gotta be sent. I, I need God. The sin. Mm -hmm. I don't need uh, somebody waking up one morning with with, with some frivolous thought mm -hmm. on their mind, with the intent on passing it my way. I don't know about you, but I don't let I don't let folks drop their trash off in my house. Right. Right. Uh, how many of you let your neighbors mm -mm. drop your they trash off? I got enough trash at my own house, and and I don't allow others to bring trash. To my house. They gotta be. If you wanna add to this foundation, to this spiritual foundation, well, well God is everything to me. Oh, yeah. uh, he, he's gonna have to be sent. Oh, well, I thank God because when 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 God got around to calling me mm -hmm. and calling Reverend Williams, calling Reverend Anderson, calling Reverend Hemphill. By the time he got to calling us, he had been calling preachers a long time. Right, sir. In, in other words, just the, 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 the scripture says there are nothing new under the sun. Uh -huh. In other words, there's nothing that God is going to gain 
by drawing us into the ministry mm -hmm. that he couldn't do himself. Right. And so, and so, and so, and so, I, 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 I love this. I love this. When we, when we understand that, that we are to be sent as, 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 as ministers of God, we have to understand that, that, that yes, we're, we're called and, and, and then, then there are times where God will send us on a particular, out to do a particular work or out to do uh, a particular ministry. Uh, but then we got to make sure that we don't fall into the category. Yes, yeah, some were called, some were sent, and then some just went. Yeah. All right. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we got to make sure that when, when God sends us out to serve us, or better yet, when we're going out to serve his program, his kingdom, or his agenda, that we are being in sin, and we're not necessarily going on our own accord. Yeah. All right. Do you know, sisters and brothers, that, that God, when he calls a ministry, he, a minister, he has something in mind for that minister to do. And I don't care how gifted a minister may be. I don't care how well he may sing. I don't care how well he may be able to uh, pull a tear. I don't care how well he may be able to lead a program. God only has a limited amount of work for that minister to do. In other words, God didn't call one son to do all the work of his kingdom building. No, he has a portion. He has a little work uh, just for us to do, to enhance or to promote or build his kingdom. And I found this out. When you do the little work that God has called you to do, and when you try to perfect that little work and do it the best that you can, And I believe these brothers around me are sent by God. I want us to understand uh, what it means to be sent. A man that's sent from God needs to understand, number one, he's, he's, he's just a messenger. Mm -hmm. huh? He might be all dirtied up. Mm. In a suit. All right. It might be clean, might smell good, might have a drive a nice car. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Huh? But he's just a messenger. Yes, sir. Yeah. Huh? And many times, sisters and brothers, people, huh? And it's the work of Satan where he gets people to confuse the message and the messenger. Mm -hmm. And here it is, here it is. The message is always greater than the messenger. We want to put the messenger on a pedestal uh -huh. yeah. when it's the message yeah. that needs to be exalted. Yeah. Uh -huh. And so listen, listen, uh, to understand that you're sent from God, number one, that he's a messenger, you got to be a messenger, you have to understand your service from the right perspective. Yes. Mm -hmm. The scripture says, there was a man sent from God mm -hmm. whose name was John. Mm -hmm. Now, I, I, I just want to say this real quick about John being a messenger and how God uses messengers. If you, if you notice how the book of John, and John, the book of John, this, this John that's mentioned in Verse 6 is not the John that wrote the book. Huh? The one that wrote the book is John the Apostle. Huh? The John in verse 6 is John the Baptist. And, and, and see, it's, it's a trip. Watch how, how it goes. He, he opens up this book talking about Jesus. It says in verse 1, in the beginning was the Word. Uh -huh. The Word is Jesus. Uh -huh. uh, he ends up, he just he starts talking about Jesus. Yes. And he talks about Jesus from verse 1 to verse 5. Uh -huh. Then, oh, it seems to me, it appears to me, maybe not everybody, right. but it appears to me that 
in verse 6, he abruptly uh, brings up John in the text of his story. And that's how God uses messengers. He uses them when he gets ready. Not when the messenger wants to go, but when God has assignment, the messenger has to be at the ready to do the will of God. Sometimes, sometimes when God calls a minister into service, it ain't on your calendar. You didn't put it on your things to do list. But God is the captain of your life. And sometimes he just orders us into service because the circumstance dictates it. So 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 look, it, he he writes in verses 1 through 5. He's just talking about Jesus and then he abruptly injects Huh, a man sent from God. All right. Huh, and listen, this messenger, we, we, we had described for us in verses 1 through 5 the greatness of God mm -hmm. in the writing. But huh, the messenger, listen, God always makes sure that when you're working from God, that you see yourself from the right perspective. All right. Too many times, sisters and brothers, messengers from God are placed on a pedestal. When, when, when you see that they're, they're seated right alongside Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Huh? But I love this because John, when 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 people want to put ministers on a pedestal, mm -hmm. it's the minister. That's got to have the right perspective of self yeah. to not allow himself to be placed on a pedestal. Too many times, too many times, too many times while a preacher is preaching, he's getting caught up in the fact that folk are putting their hands together, crying, said preacher, preach preacher, you talking preacher, and if you're not careful, you get caught up in the self. <laughs> That's why you don't need to say it, preacher. You need to say, thank you, Lord. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. You need to witness to the word yes. and not to the man. Yes. Listen, 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 listen. A man that's sent from God needs to understand that he's just a messenger. Uh -huh. All right. And a messenger has to have the right perspective of self. John, John gives us the evidence that he has the right perspective of self. Look at the verse 20. It says, when the Pharisees came to him, they asked him point blank, are you the Christ? Mm -hmm. He confessed, by verse 20 said, and denied not, but confessed, I am not the Christ. Yeah. Uh, and ministers, you got to tell folk when they're trying to put you on a pedestal, no baby, don't lift me up, lift up Jesus. Don't put me up, lift up Christ. But guess what? Because if you lift him up, something going to happen. He'll drop. You got to understand that a messenger, he, he, he sees himself from the right perspective. Mm -hmm. John says, I'm not him. There's one greater Come on. that comes after me. Yeah. He said he's so, John said he's so great, I'm not even fit to tie his shoe. Yeah. John, he has the right perspective. But a, a minister, a, a messenger, he also sees. Don't miss this, don't miss this preacher, preachers. He, he also sees the limits of his ministry. Mm. Right? Huh? Listen, listen, listen. John, John, he, he's called to an awesome ministry. He's led to evangelize for the kingdom of God, but he's not called a pastor. Mm. Right? Uh, and so too many times, sisters and brothers, we're, God calls us 
into ministry, but we don't see the limits that are placed on ministry. And when you fall out of bounds in ministry, you ain't effective right. as you could be. Right. Ah, need to understand, sisters and brothers, that all we are are messengers. Mm -hmm. And we see the boundaries of ministry. Mm -hmm. Well, a man sent from God, yes, he's, he's a messenger. Mm -hmm. But he's also uh, a man with a motive. Mm -hmm. Listen, he, he understands that uh, his calling into the ministry is a means to an end. Mm -hmm. we, we found out this morning at 8 o'clock service that God got a whole bunch of stuff All right. that he can use uh -huh. when man won't give him praise. Yeah. Huh? We found out this morning that the sun in the moon and the stars stand at the ready to do the will of God. God made rocks that will cry out when man refuses to give praise to uh, the Lord. You don't need to understand, sisters and brothers, that, uh, yes, that God's got many things that he can use to do his work. He can, Old Testament said he made a mule. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. Hold a conversation. Uh -huh. Huh? Listen, God, God, as gifted as you are, <coughs> ministers, God, God needs you to understand the real motive of why he called you to do the service. Yes, sir. Not cause you're perfect. All right. All right. Huh? It's not because you make all the right decisions. Not because all your I's are dotted and all your T's are crossed. Mm -hmm. No, he calls brothers and sisters to minister for his kingdom mm -hmm. who understand the real motive of service. Yeah. John says in verse 8, he was not that light, mm -hmm. but was sent to bear witness of that light. Mm -hmm. That was the true light which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. Mm -hmm. John, John wants to know us to know that our motives have to be pure. Mm -hmm. He says in verse 30 of this text, this is he of whom I say, mm -hmm. after me cometh the man which is preferred before me. Mm -hmm. For he was before me. Mm -hmm. uh, don't miss this, sisters and brothers. When you, when you understand the right, uh, the motives of uh, what's motivating you to serve God's kingdom, you'll discover that you'll be satisfied with doing well what he called you to do. All right. And, and, and know this, know this, sisters and brothers. The reason why you have to have the right motives and the right motivation and the right forces pushing you is because understand this about God. He has preferences. Yeah. Huh? Don't miss it. I know you're good. And I know you're gifted. But sometimes God prefers to do things another way. Mm -hmm. huh? look, 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 look what the Bible says in verse 31. John says, uh, and I knew him not, but that he should be made manifest to Israel. Therefore am I come baptizing with water. Mm -hmm. and John bear record saying, I saw the spirit descending from heaven like a dove. And in a bowl on him. Mm -hmm. Later on, it talks about the spirit descending 
and it remained on Christ. You need to understand, sisters and brothers, sometimes God calls us to just a season of service. Huh? Sometimes God calls us for just a, 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 a moment of time to serve him. And you got to make sure your motives are right because all of us desire to live for a long time. All, right. all of us desire to serve for a long time. Mm -hmm. But sometimes it benefits God's program for you to do just a little bit. Mm -hmm. And then he remove you. Uh, and he'll see you again in eternity. Yes, sir. Mm. Uh, well, you got to make sure that our motives are right. Huh? John says, this is verse 31, of whom I said, after me cometh the man which is preferred before me. Mm -hmm. For he was before me. Mm -hmm. You need to understand, sisters and brothers, you may be able to preach, but God prefers Christ more. Yes, sir. Huh? You may be able to lead, but your leadership won't lead all the way to eternity. Mm -hmm. God prefers Christ. In other words, John was just called to be the forerunner yeah. of the messenger of Christ. Mm -hmm. But he was not Christ. Yeah. And with the, there were those that tried to get John to sit in the seat of Christ. Mm -hmm. John said, no, 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 God has another preference. Oh, yeah. And you know, sisters and brothers, that every now and then God may choose somebody other than you. Yeah. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. But, but it's okay yeah. because he's never chose wrong. Yeah. Huh? It's okay because he's never made a mistake. Yeah. It, it's okay because he always decides correctly. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Know this, sisters and brothers, that I believe that all of these brothers are sent from God. Mm -hmm. A man that's sent from God is a messenger. Yes, sir. Who understands his perspective and sees the limitations of ministry. Mm -hmm. I don't know about you, brothers, but I know my limits right. mm -hmm. in ministry. Huh? Sometimes folk approach me, want me to do something. Holy Spirit agree. Oh. <laughs> yeah, folk, folk, you you gotta you gotta you gotta see the limits of ministry. Right. I, I folk have tried to drag me into stuff. But I know my limits. Right. Huh? Sometimes folk need a psychiatrist. Mm. <laughs> you don't need no preacher. You need a, you need a therapist. You gotta know your limits. I wish I had some church folk here who tried and failed, and you failed because. You got out of bounds. Listen, you know somebody that's full of the devil? Mm. You better be careful and know your limits. Huh? You may not be strong enough to go in that environment. That's why the Bible says, consider thyself first, lest thou be removed. I'm closing, but a minister that's sent, he's a messenger. He ought, to, he ought to have the right motives. And then I want to close with the method. A man, a, a, a man sent from God ought to have a method. The, the, the scripture says, he was not that light, but was sent to bear witness of that life. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and that's it, sisters and brothers. We make, we make ministry so complicated. Mm -hmm. 
Huh? But our methodologies ought to be the same. Praise the Lord. It ought to be simply just to bear witness of that light. Yes, sir. Huh? What, 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 is, what is the light, preacher? Jesus. Yes, sir. That's it. Yeah, talking about, that's what the preacher ought to be talking about. He ought to be talking about the one. I don't care how bad your life is. You ought to be talking about the one that can make your life whole again. We got to bear witness of that life. And so while your testimony may be strong, you got to make sure that we're talking about Jesus Christ. Have I got a witness? I know you want to tell the things that are going on in your life. And folk want to hear how God is blessing you. But before you end your sermon, you got to talk about Jesus Christ. Yes, you got to talk about the one that died for you uh, way out on Calvary's cross. Uh, one Friday night, uh, Jesus died. Uh, and every time I preach, uh, I got to tell the story uh, of how God so loved the world uh, that he gave his only son. Uh, yes, Jesus Christ. Uh, and he died. One Friday night, uh huh, he died early. Uh huh, Sunday morning, he got up with power uh, in his hands. Uh, and I gotta tell the world uh, because Jesus, uh, if he got up from the grave, uh, he's got the power to give you uh, resurrection life. Uh, and as I close this morning, Look at this. It's, it's preachers everywhere. Huh? You know why I know it's preachers everywhere? Because there's churches everywhere. And I used to look at that. I used to say, man, I used to frown at the con. Why is there so many churches? Why do we need so many churches? Huh? But I'm thankful. We ought to be glad. That there's a church on every corner. Huh? Because that's another opportunity for God to speak to a dying world. Huh? But here's the here's here it is, sisters and brothers. There's a whole bunch of this world that ain't gonna never, ever, ever, ever go inside them churches. Huh? Do you know who mostly come to church? Church folk. <laughs> Mm -hmm. So listen, if you're going to get sinners to come to church, you don't start in church. <laughs> Somebody going to catch that before they get to 35. Huh? Listen, the real work of the minister is not back here. Huh? I'm preaching. How many of y'all say? 
How many of y'all say? Raise your hand if you say it. If, if you ain't saying, you need to be coming down here to the but, but if you say, raise your hand, I want to see. If you say, raise your hand. Listen, I'm telling you, I'm preaching to a whole bunch of saved folks. Ain't no evangelizing in here. The work. And somebody from man, I ain't going, I ain't going on no corner, I ain't going, I ain't going to do no street evangelizing. You know what? You don't have to. Go, just go talk to cutting Aretha, who don't know the law. No, go talk to cousin Joe. Start at your house. Let God use you in your family, in your circle, on your street. And watch it make all the difference in the world. That's what he called you for. Uh, and listen, if you're going to leave it up to ministers that can't carry the title to do the work, listen, it's going to be a whole bunch of folk go to hell. Huh? God saved you so you can go home and talk about him. You ain't got to invite me to your house. You talk about it. I've had folk come Pastor Lord, I want you to, can you talk to my son? He, he, he needs to come on in and follow the Lord. What you doing that you can't talk to him? You mean you done walked all this time with the Lord and he ain't believe, he don't believe you for real yet? We're all ministers. Come on. Sit from God. Huh? With messages, with motives, huh? And our mythology has got to be the same. Yes. Just telling what God is doing in your life, it'll make the difference. It'll make the difference on your job. If you quit talking about each other, oh and start talking about God. Yeah. Watch Him make all the difference in the world. Huh? Then you know what? Listen, you know that I'm closing. That's why. That's why I had to learn. You gotta, you gotta learn as you get older. You know you can get old and be dumb. Huh? Yeah. That's why, that's why, that's why over the years, as Yolanda and I have grown in our marriage, you know what we do? We pray more. You know why? Because it's hard to argue when you're praying. Uh, it's hard to go back and forth calling each other names. And, and let me tell you, she can score too. People think it's me. She, she can run with the best stuff. Uh, yeah. So I'm, I'm, just, I'm just trying to tell you, God, God want to use you. He want to use you. Huh? And he's going to make all the difference in the world. You're sent, every last one of you, are sent to make a difference in the circles that you're running in. Huh? You're too old to be talking about that stuff you're talking about. Huh? I'm telling you something. You know what folk get by what they're talking about. Huh? And the older I get, the more I talk about the goodness of the Lord. Why? Because had it not been for him, that was working things out, I don't know where I would be right now. The baby one that is out of the ark of safety, God is saying, this is your moment to decide. And the good thing about here is most of the folk in here, 99% of the folk in here are already saved, which is good news. And the good thing about it, sisters and brothers, aren't you glad you ain't got to get saved every Sunday? Man, listen, if I had to get saved every Sunday, I'm this Sunday. No, our salvation is sure and is forever. How do we get it? Romans 10 and 9 says, And thou shalt confess with the mouth of the Lord Jesus, shall believe within thine heart that God has raised him from the dead. Thou shalt be saved. 